Hey guys, Irene here. Today I have another Photoshop tutorial. We're going to be editing this image right here. This is from my last photo shoot and you can see the behind the scenes video on my YouTube channel. I will link it in the description down below. A lot of you guys wanted to see how I edited this image. So here you go. I'm going to start with opening this in my Photoshop. A lot of you guys ask me if I use Lightroom and I usually don't just simply because I can do everything in camera raw. I like to shoot my images in raw to preserve a lot of detail in them and to be able to play with uh, highlights and shadows. So I'm usually opening it in camera raw plugin straight away and it's the first step to pretty much all of my editing. I shot this a little bit overexposed. Uh, so I'm going to lower the exposure here. I'm going to bump up the contrast. With contrast, you kind of start losing the detail in the shadow. So I like to go and bump those up just a little bit. And because I was shooting this almost direct sunlight, I'm just going to lower the highlights just a little bit. Let's actually bring the shadows a little bit as well. And let's put a little bit of clarity here. Clarity just helps with the sharpness and contrast. I'm gonna also push my vibrance up just a little bit. Let's make this a little bit more yellow. I always like to back it up and kind of see what we're getting here to see if I need to adjust anything. Um, let's see, this is before and after with just camera raw. I think I like it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and open the image. So now I'm going to go ahead and choose my crop tool. I kind of reset the crop. I don't like to set any specific crops for my image. Uh, I like to make it just a little bit more square-ish. I really like that medium format type of look. So I'm just going to make it a little bit wider and I'm going to try to position the model in the very middle. So now you guys have seen me use this trick multiple times. I'm going to take this marquee tool. I'm going to select right over here uh, be careful as you can see I'm not selecting the model here because I do not want to stretch her I'm only gonna be stretching this side right here so now after you selected it I'm gonna right click free transform right click distort and I'm just gonna drag this to the side right here and just apply the transformation and deselect the uh, selection so now that I am happy with the crop I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the layer. So I'm going to go into filter and camera raw filter. So it's bringing us back to the camera raw plugin. I'm going to go over here to the lens correction. I'm just going to distort this out a little bit and I'm going to then press this and I'm going to vertically distort it this way just a little bit and you can see the before and after it just kind of helps to balance the top and the lower part so as you can see I like that a lot a lot better so now I'm just gonna go ahead and crop the top part that got distorted just a little bit like this and you can still see the parts that I distorted here on the sides so I'm gonna go into filter liquify and I'm just gonna choose a pretty big brush and I'm just gonna kind of pull the sides here to get rid of those white borders from our lens correction. This is why I like shooting white open is because I can do this very freely because the background is so blurry that um, I can easily just stretch it out with um, my liquify tool and not worry. So while we are here, I'm just going to do a few other things. So as you can see right here, uh, I have a little bit of the fabric bunching up. So I'm just going to simply pull this. Just a little bit and same I'm just gonna pull this right here to create more of an impact and I'm just gonna make this a little bit more seamless okay that looks great and I'm gonna also go 
gonna also liquefy just a tiny bit over here where I can see some light was falling weirdly I'm all about the details all right so I'm done with liquefying so I'm gonna go ahead and merge my layers as usual I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the layer again right click on your background duplicate layer and I'm gonna go ahead and start with the skin retouch let's zoom you guys in on her skin and I like to use patch tool if you do not have your patch tool selected it's usually on the healing brush so you can just right click on that and select your patch tool and usually I like to start with the opacity at 75 so I'm gonna just go ahead and start editing the skin pretty much all I'm doing is I'm selecting the skin with the blemish or unevenness and I'm dragging it to the spot where the skin is clear and I'm using my tablet this is Wacom Intuos Pen and & Touch and with the tablet is just so so easy I absolutely love this tablet I have talked about this so many times I highly recommend it I leave the link to it in the description down below Alright, so this is the skin before and after the patch tool. I like this, so I'm going to go ahead and merge this. Uh, now I'm just going to go ahead and correct the color a little bit. As you can see, her face looks lighter than her body, mostly because she's getting more light on her face than her body, because it's more sideways and the face is more turned towards the sunlight. So I'm going to go ahead and create an empty layer and I'm gonna change it to color I'm gonna choose this color right here on her forehead and I'm just gonna paint this on top of her arm and as you can see it's kind of changing the color and makes it match her face a little bit more so this is before and after on that. I'm gonna go ahead and merge the layers as I'm happy with the result. Now I'm gonna do some color grading. So I'm gonna go ahead into my adjustment layers and choose the gradient map, double click. And I have some gradient maps already made here. And this is the one that I used for these pictures. If you do not know how to make a gradient map, you will have these um, preset ones already in uh, your gradient maps editor so you can just choose one that has two colors this one right here on the left is going to be your shadows and this one on the right is going to be your highlights so all you can do is just right click on this little square and it's going to take you to the color picker you can then go ahead and pick any color right here i just went to the red and picked the kind of uh darker um red color and then I went to the highlights, same thing, I just double click on it and I chose kind of like a yellow light color like this. Um, if you want to know the exact colors that I use, the dark one is right here, 470101. And the yellow one is F2D654. I'm gonna go ahead and press OK to apply the gradient map and then I'm gonna change it to multiply and on my opacity I'm gonna go pretty low probably yeah to like 29 or even less maybe 28 so I'm gonna leave it at that I'm gonna go back to my background layer and do another adjustment layer this time I'm gonna check a uh, selective color so on my reds I want them to be a little bit darker 
a little bit more red a little bit more darker now on the yellows let's make them more yellow that's perfect uh, whites I'm gonna make them a little bit brighter it's gonna make everything pop a little bit more let's take neutrals and make it a little bit more yellow just one over here and then let's go back to reds I want to make it a little bit more red and darker just to make it look a little bit more vibrant so I'm happy with this yeah that's looking really nice so let me just show you guys what it looked like before and after the color grading so this is before and after the color grading this is why I absolutely love using gradient maps because it gives your picture the overall tonality kind of gets everything to look uh, very complementary. So yeah, this is why I absolutely love using gradient maps. I'm going to go ahead and merge these. There's not much left to do here, but I'm going to just do a little bit of dodge and burn on this image. I have already my presets made here for highlight and shadow, but I'm going to show you guys really quickly how I do that. So I'm going to go ahead and create adjustment layer in curves and I'm going to just drag this up like that and then close it. And then all I'm going to do is press control I to invert my layer. Now I can pick up the brush and I can brush on that highlight onto whatever spots I want. So I always use a rounded soft brush and I just kind of lightly go ahead and make the areas that are already highlighted even more highlighted. I love to do it on the eyes first because I think that's one of the things that people are drawn to. Um, and then the nose. Let's do a little bit on the lip. Uh, let's do the highlight over here. Let's make it pop in. Let's do some on the hair as well. I think her body needs a little bit more shine. So let's make her glow over here and on her leg right here. Okay, so this is after the highlight. And I'm now going to do the shadowing. So I'm going to do a very similar thing. I'm going to go ahead into my adjustment layers. I'm going to choose curves. But this time I'm going to go ahead and pull it down right here. All right. Same thing. I'm going to just press Control I to invert. And now I can pick up my brush. And I can go ahead and do some shadowing. So I love to make the eyelashes a little bit darker so I'm gonna go ahead and create the line here just like that on the eyelashes and then I'm also gonna create little strokes on her eyebrows to make it look a little bit more intricate and just add kind of detail back I love doing these techniques I think it really brings the picture to life and makes it look more 3d uh, I'm gonna go ahead and Shade the lips just a little bit. And I don't think I need to do anything else here really because the pink, the picture is already pretty contrasty on its own. So um, let me actually show you what it looked like before and after the dodge and burn. I didn't do much here so it's not going to be a big difference but here is a little bit of a difference after dodge and burn. So now the final thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to open it in camera raw filter again and I want to add just a little bit more of the yellow tone here and maybe a little bit more of the clarity just like a tiny bit. Let's see this is before and after let's do a little bit more vibrance. Alright that looks great. And now I have another action here for sharpening, but I'm going to show you guys really quick how I do it. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the layer. Now I'm going to go into image, adjustment, brightness, contrast, check the use legacy and just press OK. Now we're going to go into filter, other and high pass. Now I'm going to lower this. Pretty much we're just looking to see a little bit of a detail here on the picture. 1.7 is fine here and now from normal we're going to put it to overlay 
and I don't know if you guys can see but this is the amount of sharpening it does here so I do not like too much of a sharpening effect but it's really nice when uploading to social media because it makes the picture stand out a little bit more so I'm gonna go ahead and save that let's go ahead and save this image now I'm gonna show you guys the settings that I use for the social media so I'm gonna go ahead and to file export save for web legacy so over here make sure that it's a JPEG very high optimized quality set to 95 convert to sRGB this is very very important this is what's gonna help you keep the colors vibrant and just as you see them on the monitor when uploading them to social media now on the image size when I'm uploading to social media I like to keep the height or just the biggest pixel at 2048 and then I'm gonna go ahead and save it so let's compare the before and after here's the before image right here and after before and after I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new. Subscribe to my channel and like this video and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!